With more on what these election results mean for investors, we bring in right now Dr. Pippin Malgren. She is a former financial markets advisor to George W. Bush, former deputy head of global strategy at UBS. She founded Cannonberry Group. She is currently its president. She is also a senior advisor to Deutsche Bank and numerous hedge funds. Dr. Malgren, we're so glad to have you with us this morning. Has the window closed for Obama to accomplish big things? Will he be doomed to just have small goals for the next two years? Oh, I think that it's going to be very difficult to get anything substantial done now, but it's not because the Republicans have a majority in the House. It's because the president is losing the support of the moderate Democrats. I think the most recent survey shows 47 percent of Democrats would like to consider another nominee for 2012. So I think the diminishment of his power isn't so much this election result specifically, but his own relationship with his own supporters. It's more a symptom from what you're saying. But even though Dems and Republicans really have no incentive to get along, there's a lot at stake. I mean, there's a lot on the horizon. There's going to be a vote on Bush tax cuts. There may be a budget bill. How is a more powerful Republican Party going to shape those two issues? Well, I think, look, the most important thing is that while market folks think that we've got gridlock, what we're probably actually going to have is a period of about two years where politicians are going to start floating ideas. They're going to be trial balloons. And every time someone says, mm, maybe we should have, say, a value-added tax, particularly a Republican, potentially presidential nominee kind of a person, the market's going to have to start discounting the possibility of that outcome. So I actually think, in spite of the fact that we may have legislative gridlock, we will get budgets passed, and we will have lots of ideas floating around, and the markets are going to find this gives us volatility. I was just going to say, it sounds like increase increased volatility at the very least in yeah. the stock market based on all these ideas. What about the fact that sort of the Republican control of the House opens the door to investigations of the Obama administration? I mean, basically, you have new committee chairmen coming in. They're going to have subpoena power. What does this mean for policy? I'm just thinking implementation of new health care law, plans to overhaul the U.S. financial system. Does that go backwards? You know, I think that we now move away from substance and towards the public relations side. In other words, what politicians are going to want to get a grip on is what's on the front page. And one of the best ways in politics you can control the front page is to launch investigations. Now, there has to be serious substance behind them. You can't just pick something out of thin air. But I think that there are some subjects that are going to attract the attention of the Republican committee members. Um, one area, for example, is going to be at a time when the budget deficit is blowing out and the public is basically demanding austerity there are going to be questions about relationships between, uh, let's say, the Democrats and the unions, um, unions and pension funds. This kind of subject matter, I think, is a very rich space for the Republicans to be mining. So we, we should expect some of that. So we're going to see more volatility in the equity market and more subpoenas and more news on the front page.